Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, mammals, cats, dogs, chickens, ducks, and all in between. Today we're going to be doing 10 gig networking with our Unify 16XG switch. So obviously this is here to facilitate 10 gig networking between all the systems on this side and our Unraid server where all of our map storage is. Now included with this thing are ears and all the mounting equipment you would expect and that's pretty much it uh, with also including the power cord. Uh, and you get these nice little rubber things in here and not much else to it. So you will need to provide all of your own SFP modules or SFP plus modules if you have them. And of course your optical cable and other ethernet cables if you so have them. So let's go ahead and get this thing mounted, hooked up and configured so we can go ahead and do a quick test of what kind of network speeds we get between Windows and our Unraid server. Check it out. All right, so this thing is pretty awesome already. It feels great. It's hella lightweight. It's a lot, it's probably one of the lightest switches I've ever held, uh, which I believe is a good thing. And of course, uh, one thing that is nice about it, as I mentioned earlier, it does include all the mounting hardware you need. I've already got the uh, nuts in here. So we just need to get it screwed in. Sorry, barely tighten that one down. And I'm, I am using a foam piece to kind of hold this up into place because it's uh, hard to do this stuff by yourself sometimes. Although this unit's pretty light, so I could most definitely do it on my own. Now we are gonna be using the ethernet ports on this, uh, as well as one of the SFP plus ports. All right, so the two modules I have are an Intel SFP plus one and this Finistar SFP one. And I'm told that you can use SFP plus in an SFP port um, as long as you use FS SFP plus on the receiving end as well. So they have to match. I think we're going to start off with our Finistar SFP and uh, see how that goes for us. See if we have any luck. Oh, that doesn't go in like that. There we go. Now we do know that the SFP plus ports will in fact support SFP modules because there's plenty of power. Uh, but we're uncertain if these modules even work with Unify. Uh, but we will find out pretty quickly. So I'm just plugging everything in uh, ahead of time. And once I get it plugged in, this is awkward. All right, now we got it plugged in. So all I have to do is now provide power to the switch and adopt this thing. So unfortunately, I won't be going through the adoption process with you guys. I will simply just cut right to the part where it's working and configured, but I will talk about any nuances uh, along the way if I find them. Uh, so we got power, that's interesting, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and adopt it and get it configured. Now I did manage to get the switch adopted, but what I had to do first was actually run this uh, ethernet cable between the two switches so that way it could see it on the network uh, because for some reason uh, the SFP module is not working, but I think I may have an idea why. I am getting a light here, which indicates it's working, but I'm not seeing it in the Unify controller. Uh, but I think I know why, so let's take a quick look. Okay, so in order to get the optical cable working, I think we need to somehow configure this port, which says it's disabled currently, um, to be stuck at one gigabit or a thousand megabits per second. So uh, let's see here. So we did plug it in port 17, so we're gonna click on the edit button uh, we'll go to profile overrides. So we're going to change link negotiation to manual mode and the link speed will select as a thousand megabits per second. We'll hit apply. And while that is provisioning, we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other switch. So the 10 gig switch, it does see the, the module in there. We'll click on the port. It is port 11. And we will profile override manual it does detect 10 gigabit that is interesting no that can't be right i think that's just the option we have available because that port is 10 gigabit we will wait for both of those to finish provisioning and i think we should be good to go from here so that one says it's done so what we should see is port 17 should light up or become active It is not, so, hmm, interesting. I may have an idea of why, so I will be right back. Okay, so what I did was, is I unplugged the ethernet port on the 10 gig, 10 gig switch. So you may have noticed that 
port 13 was plugged in uh, via an ethernet port. I've unplugged it and now the connection is showing green and this indicates, this green I believe indicates one gigabit per second and we can see that on both ends. So we are now using the, the optical cable, the SFP plus cable uh, between the two switches. Okay, so since this is working now, we just want to go back and check our Unraid settings, uh, network settings here. Now, if you remember from the video from way earlier where I did 10 gig networking, um, you would have seen that I actually did use the 10 gig ports uh, with the system or with my Unraid server before. Uh, so you can see that they're still in a bond zero mode here. And I still have my MTU size set to 9014. I think this was originally 9000, uh, but I said it's 9014 and it's still configured that way. There's actually nothing we need to do with Unraid at this point. Uh, but for anyone out there, you will have to set your MTU or jumbo frames to 9000 uh, or 9014. I'm not sure if it really matters, uh, but we will find out. All right, so this is the cable unplugged earlier, uh, connecting switch to switch via ethernet. I've already got the truncator plugged in to the 10 gig neck. And now we actually need to transfer the, uh, the uh, Unraid server from this switch to this switch via these two ethernet ports here. And I think we'll be good to go. I actually forgot that um, while I do have those necks plugged in, I kind of forgot that I don't have 10 gig networking cables currently plugged in. So we're just going to plug it in with these cat six cables here, kind of like as a uh, temporary measure. And just to kind of get it working, just to prove that it does in fact work. All right, there we go. So now the, the truncator is plugged in or the truncator, the Unraid server is plugged in via these two ethernet ports. I am seeing link activity already on the switch and uh, let's test it out. Okay, here's the ultimate test. So on the left, you'll see that this is the truncator, the downloads folder. This is a CentOS 7 ISO that is 4.4 gigabytes in size. And over here on the right on the Unraid server is a whole nother folder full of ISOs from previous testing as well as some shenanigans that I've done in the past. So we're just gonna copy this bad boy and paste it into that file share and almost full gigabit, but we just saw 811 megabits, I'm sorry, megabytes per second there. Uh, so that was pretty impressive. And that was, I don't even know, a few seconds. Uh, I don't have anything else that is quite as large. Okay, wow, that was uh, pretty painless and very straightforward. It pretty much worked. Luckily, I did a little bit of research this time and actually found out that you could use the SFP plus modules. Now I am using SFP modules, not SFP plus, but you could use an SFP plus module, but you would have to turn the auto negotiation to manual mode and set that to a thousand megabits per second on both ends for it to work. Now I think in my case, I didn't need to do both ends. I just needed to do the XG, set that auto negotiation to manual mode and 1000 megabits per second, and it probably would have worked, but I did both sides uh, anyway. And as far as I can tell, I'm not seeing any hiccups, uh, well, at least connection wise, because it is uh, registered in the Unify controller. Now I did want to take a moment to talk about why I chose this model specifically versus the newer XG model that has four ethernet ports, I believe. Uh, those are, you know, copper based ports. Well, the biggest reason why I chose this one over that one is because this actually has more ports. So it has 12 fiber ports and it also has those four ethernet ports. Um, and it's a hell of a lot cheaper. I mean, you're talking, you know, barely $500 for this uh, brand new, like off a site from like Amazon or Newegg. And you can actually find this cheaper through, you know, other websites or even with coupons. And the, the four port model, uh, which I forget the, the actual version number is, um, that one is maybe about $600 from Ubiquity's website or even more on sites like Amazon or Newegg. It just kind of depends on when you when you go look. So I felt like this was providing a better value. And and well, also speaking of value, this is, you know, rack mountable right out of the box. The other one is, you know, kind of short, small. I don't believe you can rack mount it. They may sell an adapter, but that's just more stuff you have to buy. Now, as you may have noticed, I chose not to buy Ubiquity's uh, SFP modules. 
Uh, there wasn't really a reason for it. I just kind of already had these from a previous experiment. Um, so I'm just using literally what I have on hand. Now, luckily, uh, the Intel ones do work. Uh, now, there'll be links for all this stuff that is in this video, by the way. I know I didn't really say that. But um, the Intel ones one, blah, the Intel ones did work. I did test that off camera just in case. Uh, it's more, more or less to prove to myself um, that they did. So I did want to talk about one more thing that I came across while you know trying to figure out which 10 gig switch I wanted to buy. And originally I almost did not buy the switch because I read in some forum posts as well as reviews that the ethernet ports did not work or maybe they did work but didn't hit gigabit speeds. Now as far as I can tell in my very limited testing I was able to achieve gigabit speeds or very close to it. Now there are some factors in there as in you know it is going from an NVMe drive to an NVMe RAID 1 cache so that may have an effect but I should be able to hit one gigabit per second because I've done that in the past uh, in that other video. Uh, so as far as I can tell it is working. Uh, maybe some people have like a different version of this product because I know Ubiquity sometimes releases updates or newer versions um, of their you know same model products. So maybe I got lucky and got one of the newer ones and maybe they have something older, not really sure. But for me, these ports definitely do work, all four of them in fact. All right, well that's pretty much it. Uh, it was pretty painless and straightforward, so there's not really much else to show. Now I do need to clean up all of my cables because it is a total mess over there, but that will be either another video for next time or maybe not even a video at all. Uh, so don't worry about the mess that you guys have seen. I've been doing multiple projects simultaneously. Uh, but whatever the case, I just want to say thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.